I am unashamed. What about you? So, so I got a text here. So, you know, we had Bob uh, DeMoss on. Were you here when we had Bob on? I don't know. I can't remember. I think he may have been gone that day. Bob? So, so, Bob, big Bob. Tell me about him. Bob is, uh, he worked with Dad and I. He was a collaborator <clears throat> on our Duck Commander Faith and Family Bible. Oh. And, uh, He's, you know, he's a ghostwriter, so he does, you know, he he was the one that kind of wrote it, but Dad and I met with him and kind of worked through the whole process. So Dad, so he works now for Focus on the family. So he invited Mom and Dad out to this big swanky thing that they're doing out in California. And it's so funny because in Bob's mind, he was like, I mean, he was, he was like, you know, you got, you know, five-star accommodations, this Laguna Beach, California, it's beautiful. And so he's laying all this to Dad, and Dad's just looking at him, you know, cigar store Indian looking <laughs> Bob's selling making his pitch and I'm I'm just sitting there grinning because I just thought everything you're laying out for dad like that you think is a great selling point he's he doesn't like any of it like you yeah. got to go to California you got to you know you got to be in this <laughs> resort you know all this stuff and yet, so mom's like oh ooh, yeah oh that sounds so much fun and I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at that. So finally, he's, like, he's trying to sell that. And he said, look, Phil, there's water here. They may, there may be hunting going on. You know, he throws that in there. And <laughs> that's looking at it. And I said, yeah, there's a lot of hunting on Laguna Beach, California. I must admit, I have <laughs> in my 75 years to give you boys something to look forward to, which is coming up shortly. It'll come up on you before you know it. Uh, I've pretty well... Uh, gone through and I'm past the point of a fun <laughs> event. Come come here, it will be a lot that's, of fun. That's borderline depressing. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not depressed. I'm just saying. Well, well I was just. You I get mean, 75, and there's no. Fun but I was listening to it, and, and I understood because, like, it would appeal to me. Like Lisa and I would love a trip like that. But I was thinking that there's nothing you're saying that Dad's going to say. Yeah, we might have to do that. So Dad said. So he didn't say anything for a while, and he's like, what do you think, Phil? And Dad was like, yeah, Bob, that looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he, went the, he went into the he whistle. He went into the whistle. So I thought Bob got it. So yesterday, Bob texted me and said, hey, what, is your, have your mom and dad said anything about the trip? I said, it's a, it's a hard no, Bob. <laughs> you missed- Fun to me is when the, <laughs> when the pump water gets out over the grass, as I checked this morning, you check your pump, it's rocking and rolling, and you drive down to see how far the water has come up in the woods, and you look out there, when you come around a little curve in the thicket, you look down there, and there's two woodies sitting there, what was on dry ground yesterday, but there was water there this morning, pumped overnight. So that 3,000 gallons a minute oh, took about two and a half, 24-hour cycles, two and a half, which is not bad. Within three days, water was there, and I noticed there were ducks there. I said, to me, that's a barrel of fun. <laughs> so I don't need a much to, to, to make me grin out these days. I don't need much Five to make me Five-star hotels ain't doing it for you. No, but you little, put a little water. Little thing. <laughs> Big and I'm, cities, <laughs> hanging out. Because you say, what do they do? They're just hanging out. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like the, even if Dad somehow, by some miracle, it, it would be a miracle, if you got him there, he wouldn't want to leave the room. I mean, it's just they don't understand you, Dad. People, they think things appeal to you that appeal to other people. But it just... I love all the people who would arrive maybe and they want pictures taken and all that. <laughs> but if they just stop for a minute and say to stand there for hours at this part of it and that part of it, and you, and, and you don't want to be – you don't want to be rude. That's you don't want right. to be rude. And, and, but the camera, and it just, it's a lot of picture being taken. And I just, okay, I love them. I'm, but, was, but a steady dose of that. It's it, overrated. It's, you know, <laughs> flying in an airplane, bumpy, going to where you're going. I mean, I'm like. No, you know, look at well, you got to wear a mask for about eight hours, by the way, while you're Here, on. I've got these whiskers. I've got a mask on, you know, standing there. And, I would love to see him with a mask with that beard. That'd be funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I, I mean, what... what I've never got into the mask phase of all the, the this key. I, I said, this microbes. Yeah, I said, mask's not doing any good. It's microbes. I said, they're small, real small. 
I said, this, this, you know, it's like a filter on a, on a on your air conditioner. You know, it catches dust. Okay, and you know, oh, it catches a lot of stuff. Catches a lot yeah. of dust, but, but <laughs> that's pretty well. That's pretty well. But it, but it a lot of stuff. It just finally blocks in that filter, but it's not stopping it. See, the difference is most people change their filter out from time to time, but you're not changing that because it's just been there a while. So your filter is just mask. getting more stuff. No, it's I'm like, talking about your beard. Oh, yeah. That that filter. But you're right. The problem is with the mask. Like some, I know people, first of all, the cloth masks don't even work. They, I mean, they pretty much said that. I mean, mm-hmm. Unless you got one certain type of mask, you're not keeping stuff in and out anyway. But – the thing is, I've seen people that have the same one hanging in the truck. Well, they've been using the same mask for two years. I mean, oh, that's what I'm give me a break. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, that's like the your, your surgeon, you know, he's coming in to operate. I've been wearing this mask for the last three years, but we're all good to go. Well, look, I, when I mean, we were, microscopic when we were, microbes and then the mask, you're just shutting them down. When we if were, it were, you couldn't breathe. That's right. <laughs> when we were in Greece, I was readjusting my mask. And the wind was blowing. It blew out of my hand, and the the ground, which was just dirt, and you know, there's people thousands of years of people that, that have been there. Your mask is rolling <laughs> like a leaf under yeah, an oak that's tree what in a wind. Yeah. So I went to pick it up. I thought, no, because I'm not going to wear that. <laughs> so the first place we try to go into, they're like, "You need a mask," and I said, "It." It's in the encampment down there. <laughs> it's, it's it hit the ground, but we had a language barrier, and no no entree. And I yep. was like, no, I'm not trying to order. No, they was like, you can't get in here without that. I was like, but but it was dirty. <laughs> it wasn't computing. It was defeating the purpose to wear a mask. I dropped it. I had one, so I waited. In I India, like, the disease. The diseases that come through their culture, and it just just rapidly spreads. They'll 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 they don't have like enough water. They will big big tanker trucks pull up with full of water. Everybody's got five gallon cans and buckets, and they're catching the water and it's falling out on the road. And you know they're and hooking it up. I mean they said it's just the disease. It just it's ravaging terrible. them. And plus you got every river. You know, people living on it, so you oh, got yeah. waste going into oh, it. Oh yeah, it's a it's a bad situation. I mean, the whole landscape where all that's going on is just just working alive with all kinds of microbes. I mean, it, it it's yeah, just it's they're spreading disease at a rapid rate well, of speed. Like something hits through there, it's it's usually pretty bad news yep. there when it happens. So, well, that's the, I mean, a lot of what we're going to get into Matthew eighteen. You have all these situations arise where circumstances change. Or happen, and Jesus is addressing them as a general thought. But that's the problem in our society and the rulers of this age. There's no exceptions to the rules or no practical understanding. I mean, what about that? Oh, would do you have to put a dirty mask on? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, of course not. Oh, yeah. You're not getting in here. Right. If you had a dirty mask on with just mud dripping down and germs all over, they'd say, you can come in. <laughs> well, and this spread defeating, whatever that. Yeah, isn't this defeating the purpose? You know, when Matthew is writing about the, I don't know whether the, the original language, you know, when Jesus was transfigured, you know, I don't know whether it was, uh, whether that's a biblical word the transfiguration but when he's standing there and here comes two guys out of the past you know i figure out how far he was from the end of moses and elijah and they're standing there with him you would think because the disciples tried to make a little fanfare out of it but jesus himself along with moses and elijah i would add them to it they were just doing it in a very matter of fact way. Yeah, they just appeared, and it wasn't like, "Hey, y'all, check this out." Right. I mean, there was no, there was no, "Hey, look at this." Right. And, and even Matthew just recorded it as it happened, 
and 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 you would think there would have been a little more jumping up and down about the whole thing, <laughs> but other than well, well that's let me let me build a, some some shelter here. Well, I, but it, it it was a it's one of the strangest things in the Bible I've ever read. It's like they were like you they talk, were professional transfigurers. Yeah, I think the word. But Al had was, Al made an interview. He said he's showing you. He was the 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 author or the whatever of time itself. He, he had power over time and space. Yeah, because here's two people that everybody assumed was were dead. Yeah, and had gone back into the ground, but they weren't. They were there. You know, I but guess Elijah took off. Well, he was levitating in the chariot. Right, and he just disappeared. Yeah, let so me he just, just read made this for y'all. I guess. Speaking of the transfiguration, I meant to get this in the other day. Lord, you've been Psalms 90. You've been our dwelling place throughout all generations. You, God, have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Now, just think about the time factor. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you're God. You turn men to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. <laughs> dust time uh, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. I mean, just think of the, the concept of what the psalmist is saying, and you're like, uh, For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that's just gone by. 24-hour period, you're like, it's no more than a day to you. You're not worried about that at all. You're way beyond that. Or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in sleep of death. They're like the new grass all the morning, though it, Though in the morning it springs up new. Here you go. We got a baby coming out of the womb. By evening it's dry and withered. We're consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You've set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if you have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. Life itself, he's not painting a pretty picture, for they quickly pass and we fly away. We know who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great at the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Did Pretty you, amazing. You read some of these old writing, you're like, a day comes by, and we think, boy, you know, seemed like his day never going to end. Boy, it's been a long day. <laughs> When you get to looking at it, Al, to God, did you notice who a wrote, thousand years is <clears throat> duly squatted? Did you notice who wrote that song? Yeah, Moses. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, what what's ironic about that is he he made that description. He had it. He understood. <laughs> and here it. he showed up almost two thousand years later. That's correct. With Jesus, which according to his timing would have been just you know thirty six hours. That's right. That's and why that. John the Baptist in John one when he said, "I testify," you know. The one who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mind bender. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, that means time is doodly squat to him. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if that's exactly what it means. <laughs> I think that's the exact <laughs> my translation. Yeah. Time is doodly squat. But you said on the <clears throat> biblical word of that transfigured there in 17.2, you know, it means it's where we get the word metamorphosis. Yeah. So that the change, I was looking at the earthly, worldly definition. That. Of transfigured. transfigured yeah. what the, and they're basically like to change an outward form or appearance to transform, usually for the better. Yeah. Something yeah. more make, beautiful or elevated. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they don't know. <laughs> no. It's, it's. It's it's beyond comprehension. Well, what do you do, Phil? You're up there. You're now this spiritual being with a body. People know who you are. I mean, you. It's gonna be hard to relate that to 
just mere mortals. Let's uh, let's take a break. So uh, one of the things I've learned that through the years of growing up in the on near the Gulf Coast and near water, yeah, uh, homeowners insurance is a good thing because you never know. Sometimes you live on the river, sometimes you live in the river, but when you're in the river, it's good to have something to cover yourself, right? The river we live by fluctuates 30 feet in any given year. Exactly. So I've learned that this is important, but another thing that homeowners doesn't cover is someone stealing the title to your home. So you're going to need something else for that, and we've got just the thing. One of our sponsors is a company called Home Title Lock, and they're going to protect you from cyber criminals that uh, go online, find your title, forge your signature, steal the equity from your home, and then spend it when you get left holding the bag, which is terrible. So it's home title lot puts a barrier around your home's title, which is important. So we want you to check these guys out, give you some peace of mind. Go to hometitlelock.com, register your address, make sure you're not already a victim. Enter the code RADIO for 30 days of free protection. So that's HomeTitleLock.com. Use the code RADIO, HomeTitleLock.com. What was interesting to me, Jace, is that Peter, James, and John, like, I mean, Moses lived way before. How did they even know? Did they have name tags? I mean, how, yeah, how, how would you know? Thank you know. How would you know who you it was? kind of figure it out with the conversation. I, I guess so. That's what happened. Of course, Peter was so dumbfounded. I mean, bless him. He's so dumbfounded. He's like, it's good that we're here today. Like he went into like yeah, he yeah. was he was kicking off a Sunday service. Yeah. It's good we're here today. <laughs> and and I'm gonna build a shelter for all three of you guys. And then uh-huh. Jace made the point last week. And it's you know it's but you know you're like talking gibberish when God interrupts you. Yeah. While he was still speaking. <laughs> The Lord said, <laughs> "You talk too much." When God yeah. I mean, when you're talking too much. You need to just be quiet. How embarrassing yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah. I get on I mean, my wife like... all the time for saying "bless him" because when she, I said you're fixed to call someone an idiot, and she's like, "Do what?" That's right. She's like whatever you're fixed to say is not pleasant. That's she's right. Like, Bless him, <laughs> and then rip him. Then Bless they, him, and then yeah, rip him. It's him. a That's... rip. I'm like, don't use spiritual words to rip someone in an idiotic fashion. <laughs> yeah. But she said, I'm trying to be put a positive spin on it. He needs the blessing of God or he wouldn't have done. I such thought that's just a Southern idiom. When somebody's an idiot, no, you, you just say, say that to bless him. That way you can say anything you want. Well, that's true. About him, good or bad. Yeah. Or her. As it yeah. Turns I've out. heard that. Bless their heart. It's, it's yeah. That it's, means it's a they're, way to, they're a terrible <laughs> person. Oh yeah. It rips them. You're ripping them. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> you can say anything you want to, you but <clears throat> Peter earns all of his, you know, I don't know blessing. whether I would have been at ease for an explanation. If I had been standing there like Peter, oh, we'd have been just like I, that. I would have been like, worse what in the world. But, but you well, notice whenever, you, whenever God spoke, and then I'm assuming like they illuminated because it talked about how bright everybody was. Then they were terrified and hit the ground, which was probably well, should have been the yeah, first. I'm, I'm sure you felt they felt some heat. Yeah. Before. Oh yeah. I mean, you're watching this happen. What would you be thinking? You talk about these Marvel movies, Jace, and the Eternals and all that. This was this is for real. Probably would have thought, don't make him mad. <laughs> Did I tell you? Yeah, I told y'all last time. I, my friends went and saw that movie Eternals, and I said, "I got one question: Could they die?" They kind of looked around and said, "Yep, they could. They could die. The whole thing's built on a lie." Not eternal. Right, right off the bat. That's not right. eternal. Not eternal. Why name it eternal? It just burns me up <laughs> that we fall for it <laughs> every time. Do you know what? Also, I noticed yesterday. I learned one of my buddies in in Arkansas killed this huge deer. Send that thing it. didn't even look like a deer. Oh, you saw the deer? I saw the picture, yeah. So I see the deer, and I was playing cards, and I couldn't help it. I had to, I had to share it. But it reminded me of that every time where Jesus said, don't tell anybody about yeah. this. Because he said, because my buddy was like, don't tell anybody about this. And I was like, well, I can't help it. It's too awesome, the deer. So my friends were like, send me a picture of that deer. I was like, I can't do it. Because we, he told me not to. Yeah. He's like, well, why'd you show it to him? 
because I couldn't help it. It was awesome. And you're you're so overwhelmed by it, you want to see it. They wanted it it wants to spread. Yeah. They, you know, oh, and it if would I have. send that, it'll be on social media. That's right. It'll go viral. Because <clears throat> most people want to to have a picture of this deer. Because I, I guarantee it's probably close to a state record. Gotta be. State record is. It does not look real. It doesn't. But most people want that. But this guy who shot it, you know him. Oh, yeah. Man of God, humble. He doesn't want the attention, nor does he care about being plastered all over the He just sent it so, to close friends. He sent it to close friends and, and just said, don't tell anybody because he don't want people hanging around trying to shoot his deer, which is yeah. probably yeah. what happened. <laughs> Be yeah. careful. Fame has a hook in it. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so, like you, Dad, all those years you killed all the bands. They were like, yeah, we send it in so we can know exactly where you're killing these ducks. And you were like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. That's how they buy land. That's right. If yeah. you keep sending bands <laughs> saying, give me my certificate, you look up and you don't own the land all anymore. All of a sudden. The government is... comes in and says, we got some prime real estate, real estate here. They're killing all our bands. I saw it multiple times, multiple yeah. times. Well, where a lot of those are killed is now government land. Yep. You know. Shocker of shockers. But it really made me think about when Jesus kept saying that. Don't tell anybody about that. Don't, don't tell anybody about that because it just wasn't time, but they can't help it. How can you not describe what happened here? I mean, as soon as you come down from the mountain, don't you know when Peter saw his wife, he's like, let me tell you just what happened. Right. And she's probably not believing it because how can you believe something? I mean, we're talking about things happening that we can't even describe. That, that's right. So after the events that started with the transfiguration, which we talked about, then there was the healing of the demon-possessed boy, who I think the highlight of that miracle Jesus did was that the disciples couldn't do it, because that seems to be the theme here. Remember, they had tried to cast him out, and they couldn't. You know, And they were like, why the lack of power? And Jesus said, well, you don't, you're not having enough faith. And that's when he told him, he said, if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, you, know, you could move a mountain. The idea was you didn't really believe you could do it, was his point to him. So I think all that's, this whole thing is Which generated. Which is normal. <clears throat> right. Because a lot of churches now, they take that to mean go, the reason you can't do something supernatural because you don't have enough faith. And, you know, I think they missed the point because when he got into that, there was one, he said, this one could only be driven out by prayer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, it, it's getting into a world as mortal beings that we're we're just not, we, we don't understand. That's right. And which is why we need God's power. It's more about him working, working in us and through us. So what I'm saying, my point is, you can go around and try to tell people to have more faith, have more faith, but Jesus can do that. But uh, we don't know people's that's, hearts. That's right. And so we tend to point people to the one who can supply that power. You get to know him on a daily basis, not just once a week. And all of a sudden you look up and understanding comes, wisdom and and good things. Yeah, that's right. And then, then you have the temple tax, which... My, I think the point of that was to convince them because remember he asked, was it Peter? Yeah, Peter. He he comes in after he kind of said, yeah, he pays his taxes, and Jesus makes the point that when you're a son, you're exempt from having to do this legalistic temple stuff. And so I think that was the whole point of mm -hmm. that. You know, of course we talked about you know catching the the fish with the coins, but what he was trying to tell him is, you got to understand. All the things you thought were important, the temple, the sacrifices, the rituals, all that, it's not going to matter. And he had just told them what he was going to do. But see, they're still he's still trying to get them to put two and two together. You know, the idea is you're a son now. You're not you're not you're viewing this as you're just a parishioner. Yeah. And to your point, Jace, I think a lot of people get stuck there. They see themselves they're still as, doing it today. Yeah, they it's see the they process. see themselves as a church member as opposed to being a son of the almighty God. And so everything revolves around what happens at a location someplace. And you're like, wait a minute, it's way bigger than that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that, but it's this way bigger than that. So I think it's that same concept he's trying to get I mean, to. You're a son of God in church building, and you have a relationship with your father, but when you leave and you're out in the world, you're, you're still a son of God. You should act like it. Right. But a lot of times it's, 
you know, I act one way in church and it's like a lizard that changes his color based on his surroundings. I mean, that, that tends to be the more normal way that people operate. That's why I think I thought the conversation we had yesterday with Tony was so good, Tony Perkins, because he's got an organization he works with that's trying to impact real life day to day culture, stuff that's happening, court decisions, all that. We're doing what we're doing you know, and putting it out there four days a week, but it, all of us are a part of churches, but it's like, we're, we're saying it's bigger than just one place, one location, one town, which exactly. is kind of the whole point. Let's take another break. So Jace, well, when you're on one of those big jet airliners and you're flying across the country, you're on your way to an event, what is the most important equipment that you have with you while you're on the plane? Your earbuds. Your earbuds, exactly. And that's why I love my Raycons. That's my earbuds. You need something to be able to get some good music into your brain. Uh, I know Jace loves worship music while he's, and sometimes he sings along, which I don't know that I would recommend that, but Jace does it. It does get a little awkward for your neighbor. So uh, one of our sponsors is, is a company called Raycon. Uh, and they have wonderful earbuds. They're really great. Eight hours of playtime, 32-hour battery life, which is important, especially when you've got a, a long trip ahead of you. So we want you to check these guys out. You go to buybuyraycon.com, buyraycon.com slash unashamed. You're going to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. So hurry and do this. Limited time only. You don't want to miss out. Buyraycon.com slash unashamed to unlock up to 20% off your Raycon's Bam today. Which which then takes us up to chapter 18, which, Jason, before we came on, you were saying it seems a, a bit random. And it's kind of three different things he tells them. Or I look at it like there's two questions and then sort of an implied question in chapter 18, but it's kind of his speech that kind of wraps up this idea that uh, with the disciples, because when he shifts into chapter 19, we're going to get into something different. It, it proves uh, uh, when the Apostle Paul was saying, once I was alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life. Romans 7, 9. And what intended to, to help me actually brought death. The thing was, that he said, nothing wrong with the, he goes on to say, nothing wrong with the commands, yeah. but there's a lot wrong with the human race. But if you look at what Jesus said, he really took it to heart and made it plain multiple, multiple times, being like little children. Yeah. He's he's yeah. saying their innocence. That's what you need to yeah, that's it. That you need to be like that because their innocence protects them. Well, you mentioned Romans seven. It took me back to the garden. You remember the first thing was knowing good and evil. Yep. So the, the yep. very first sin committed was the idea, I want to know, not just good, I want to know. the innocent, the little children, they're not old enough to know. Right. And, and that, that, there's a gigantic protection built around them. That's right. The innocent. Because you think yeah. about Adam and Eve were like little children until they ate that fruit. <laughs> I mean, like God said, don't do one thing. And when they said, oh, we're going to do it because, you, you know. know, now you're trying to watch a ball game and pretty well front and center is somebody, some woman shaking her boobs or her booty. <laughs> so you got boobs and booties. <laughs> they have, throughout, a, they the, have a formula. Throughout them. watching They're the like, ball game. I'm trying to watch a football game. <laughs> like, and I said, Miss Cut Kate, to the cheerleaders. They do the same thing. Every yeah. Time. Oh. Scores a touchdown. They cut to the cheerleaders. It's, it's that instant. Oh, yeah, wow. and it's a lot of gyration too. Those. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, why don't they at least for you know a ball game, just stick with the ball game? People having for play to running, <laughs> but but they've always got the boobs and the booties. Yeah, and I'm they're thinking, professional I'm thinking, Give me a break! I'm <laughs> trying mean, to make a living here. <laughs> And some people are like, that's why I watch the Boy, you're asking yeah. for a lot. You, what are you trying to say? I said, I'm just trying to say for a 40 couple of hours, just, just, why don't you just, all the gyrations and all, why, why just keep on with it? Because it's just a TV formula. To because little life. children, they don't even notice it. Well, they, well of they, course not, because they, they don't have the that's what's funny. It was funny you say they that. They don't see the depth and the and the power behind 
that kind of behavior. You're right. Which is nice. Huh? It's nice that they don't they don't get oh, well. To it, your to your point though, so kids like middle school, they'll have the cheer squad, but they're not immoral. That's dressed, right. Well, and, and they go out and they do the maybe some, right. but they do the flips, and it's more about the gymnastics, and they yeah. they're t- they got their little team, and but so that's innocent. But that's then right. once you get to this adult thing where everybody's just the, the least amount of clothing. I mentioned the other day. I said, you remember when you were like like a little child. I said, all of you remember those days. I said, but when you hit that junior high, high school, it doesn't give an age, but at some point, you know, you know, you know something now that wasn't there before. Right. And then, you know, you talked about a little girl on the school bus, and you know, for you know, you for the first time, you're like, whoa. Yeah, that was me. Something, yeah, and something kicks in there, and you're like, what in the world? Your conscience is developing. And right and wrong becomes a uh, front and center. That's right. Uh, attitude. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? I had been in the eighth grade, and then I was shifting to the ninth grade. And the minute the girl walks on the bus, something changed. I mentioned that to the audience the other day before we baptized a lot of people, but I noticed all of them. I was making that point for the on behalf of the ones who were visiting. I said, "You've come here to be born again, right?" Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, just remember these things. And one of the things I mentioned was that. I said, you remember when you hit by junior high, high school, going into teenage years? I said, when it all started and the downward spiral came up on you, right? I said, or am I the only one that ran into this? And they all said in the affirmative, no doubt about it. Yeah. At one time, we, we we were innocent, but we're not now. So Lisa, well, whenever we speak, uh, Lisa tells a story about she was chasing me. She was in sixth grade. I was in eighth grade, and I never noticed her, you know, a little gawky sixth grader. She said, but then I saw her at McDonald's, which was our big hangout when I was in high school, and I was, this time I'm a senior. She's a sophomore. I, I stuck my head in the window of her car, and I went, whoa. And yeah. and then she tells the audience, you know what that means in redneck? You filled out, yeah. Yep. <laughs> which is what it means. Yep. You know, and so that's what happens. There was a change there. And in my the, case, the not, trouble, for, not it, for the better. The trouble is beginning. <laughs> That's right. But it's that idea it you're talking about. It followed me till I was 28 years old. Some, I noticed that we baptized the other day, some of them had reached into their 40s and 50s. They just said, we just never took it to heart till yeah. now. That's right. And we heard you guys, and we said, you know what? It's time for me to get in on that action. Yeah. So, and they just keep coming. Yeah, there was a guy there Sunday. It's a beautiful thing. He was late sixties, I think, and uh, he was he was baptized this past Sunday at WFR, and he listens to the podcast, and he's from Illinois, and he said, you know, he said I've lived my whole life not understanding, but now I get it. Yep, I get the importance of it. I said, well, look, dude, <clears throat> no matter when you get in on this, the beauty is now you got the rest of the way. You got it. You understand. You it. got it. So you start growing and you go from there. So, but but it's you're right. You go back under. A childlike mentality yep. of trust, of yep. not wanting to not <clears throat> wanting to know evil. I mean, we avoid evil at yep. all costs. Yeah, Miss and I was talking about last night. You know, we had we just had our Mia Moo fun day, and which it's fun, but this year we put Mia more in charge of what we were going to do because we were like, only she knows truly what all these kids are going through and she's been doing so much better because you know when she got to her teenage years just like everybody else you have to find your relationship with god and your identity and so i was just like let her do it and y'all stay out of it whatever she i said even if it's she fails yeah let let her do it it's hers because i think it'll be good for her well it was way better than anything we've ever done before <laughs> And everybody agrees, even Missy. Because with her, it was real. She, she. It was it. real, and there was something about you know, because we're talking about the main thing. We're talking about kids here, about being innocent. And I realize she's a teenager now, but she is a kid in, like all these other most of the, these other kids are younger than twelve or thirteen that were there. But what I was going to say is they have a. They're more open-minded. They have a better imagination. They, they're they more trusting. There's a lot of qualities about kids that came out in this weekend. It wasn't just a day. It was a weekend that you're just like, 
Yeah, we needed somebody young who had gone through this, doing this to capture the magic of a child. All yep. right, spirit. I yep. mean, Which, but, and, you're, and you're right, that applies exactly what this is talking about. Let's take another break. So uh, one of our sponsors is a, a company called Good Ranchers, and they're a really interesting company. Um, of course, they're an American company, and they're really uh, interested in trying to help American farms and ranches that produce beef, because I didn't realize this till I, till I heard from these guys that a lot of, 80% of the beef that is sold in the U.S. comes from some other country. So that hasn't really been good for our local ranchers. And so Good Ranchers wants to be able to put be able to put America first, but also really put some good meat on your dinner table. Right now, there's a limited offer for our audience. You're going to get 10 free bistro fillets when you enter the promo code Phil when you check out. That's $100 value, free with the promo code Phil. So you want to check these guys out, goodranchers.com slash Phil. You can get those 10 free fillets with your order. And even better, when you subscribe, you also save another $25 on each box of their meats for life. So it's a really good deal. And look, this the best thing they got going is that this is a really affordable way to be able to feed your family. So check them out. You get 10 free fillets. That's $100 value. Free express shipping if you go to goodranchers.com slash Phil or use the code Phil at checkout. So there's 10 free fillets, free express shipping, $25 off your subscription for life at goodranchers.com slash Phil. <clears throat> That's exactly what he's saying here. Because remember, this this whole thing about be, becoming like a little child was couched in the question of who is the greatest in the kingdom. And there's, I, you know, I don't want to imply too much, but there's sort of an implication to me that when the disciples asked Jesus that question, it was like, out of us. I mean, because, you know, we know they've had this ongoing thing. And oh, we, I agree. I we, think that is the issue because that's what people Remember do. James Who's and John? The I mean, remember their mom came to Jesus? I mean, and, Muhammad Ali wasn't inventing, that's right. you know, I'm the greatest. That's been, he would just said it. But everybody <laughs> else, that's what they think, and that's what drives people. Right. And even like when you're talking about the cheerleaders as adult cheerleaders, if you got into that little world, it's all about, spending money to make yourself look better and compete against the woman standing next. They, they care less about they're in their own world about that. And then TV's using that to get people to watch yeah. and they gain five pounds. Guess what? Cut. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Should have ate a salad. The lure, the lure of it all. But then yeah. they look up and they're older. And what happens They're That's because it's so f- fleeting that you pursued something that was never going to bring you contentment and joy because that's a fading path. I mean, there's there's young people coming up. You know, it's funny, Jason. I was thinking about that with a lot of mystery. When you mentioned that about Muhammad Ali, so in the old days, and not too old. I mean, in my days, that when someone on a on a playing sports did something terrible, cost him a game, he was a goat. The, he's the goat because he blew it. I don't know why we picked on goats, but but now that has totally flipped. The modern era, a goat is the greatest of all time. It's the goat. Yeah, I mean they exactly. they talk about Tom Brady being the goat. You know, he's the yeah. greatest of all time. So that that's a word that's changed in my lifetime. You know, Bill Buckner was the goat of the '86 World Series because he let the ball go through his legs and it cost the Red Sox yeah. the World Series. I still can well, see that. But that's yeah, what I'm me saying. too. All right, Tom like Brady. I, it, it was just right there. No the game. Yeah, all he had to be is a quarter inch lower. But this is World Series. You but know, think, the Red but side. think about it. Tom Brady, no doubt, greatest quarterback of all time. That's Super Bowl. He's throwing a pigskin, touchdowns. But in the grand scheme of things, what exactly does that get you? Well, he's got a lot of money. He's got a good looking wife. He's a supermodel wife. Okay. <laughs> if well, for some there, people, that's if enough. That's all there is to it. It's not well, much. Well, I'm saying they're like, boy, I would just like to have that. Yep, you'll have it a few years, and then guess what? It's over. That's right. So you there. look up one day, and Tom can remember back when he was in his 40s, which put pretty good move. He's still going. Yeah. But he turned about my age, 75 or 80. 
I mean, you can sit then, around. Then, and then the reality of it all. Well, he'll, about what happened. he'll be. He'll have the. Uh, he'll have the the uh, the yellow jacket on. Yep. And he'll be sitting with the other guys in the yellow jackets talking yep. about back in the day. Back in the what day. What they used to do. So my point was, though, if you go to a group of kids, that energy, that optimism, that trust, the innocence, that's why he said that's the greatest. Because yep. you can have the greatest life here imaginable. You can win Super Bowl after Super Bowl. There's going to come a time where you're going to have to deal with it. It's over. That's all oh, yeah. That ship has <laughs> sailed. And that's, that's you're it. just not going to be as happy to be around as you once were. You know what's interesting yeah. to me, Jace, is I read stories. I just read one recently. There's some guy, I can't remember who he was or who he even played for, but he he was on a Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl. He was a, like a de- defensive back or something. And now he, he had gone back to school and he'd gotten his master's. And so maybe he was a doctor. And he was a principal at some school in some little town somewhere. And I just thought about it. You know, it's like he's just like he's got his little life there on his deal. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure he talks about it. Hey, you remember when you were in the Super Bowl back in, you know, 19, whatever. But he's just a principal at a school, you know, just everyday kids. I mean, mean, like all the glory is just down to just living. It passes much quicker than we would like (laughs) for it. And the, the end comes more quickly than we realize. And it and it's uh, now what? Yeah. Well, it's like I saw Joe Namath the other day doing some commercial for something, you know. Oh, the old people yeah. commercial. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. old people. And look, nothing. Hey, go for it, Joe. I'm sure they, you know. And I, one day I may be doing a commercial <laughs> for, you know, toenail clippers, <laughs> but which would be perfectly fine. Yeah. But it kind of hits you in that moment because the same commercial the they had like the guy who was when he was a kid. Was on that show Good Times, and he was like, "Oh, JJ, I, I know my." And look, and they had him in the commercial. Guess what? He he's still doing the dynamite. <laughs> That's right. He's seventy. Yeah. He's dynamite. <laughs> yeah, it didn't quite have the punch from when he was a little teenager doing it on the show. I noticed the same thing. Yeah, I used to love to hear him say that. Yeah, I did too. Good times. You know who else was? I noticed you hadn't probably seen it yet. I just noticed it yesterday. Uh, Captain Kirk. Is doing the same commercial now, William Shatner. Oh yeah, I saw him. Now well, he's he, ninety two. Well, he just got back from. He went to space. space. Yeah, yeah. Which was kind of crazy with the Star Trek, and he's really. I mean, he's ninety two, and he's like, I'm really doing. You mean he took the ride? Yeah, yeah. We're took we're the literally ride. boldly going where. <laughs> well, somebody went last week, but <laughs> we're we're doing. It. Yeah, this they were in about a twenty by twenty foot cubicle, you know. Yeah, hey, you know, Captain Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like every time I we bring up Captain Kirk, I think about Phil teaching that class. That's right. And this young kid, who what you know, all his lights weren't flickering. He raised his hand. He's like, "Are you saying Star Trek's not real?" Because you were made some analogy. Yeah. yeah. And you said it's a it's a TV show. He said. No, that's happening. <laughs> I was in the class. I thought, oh, they're, up like, there. He was, they're up there. They're up there. Oh, look. He and, was, and Phil was like playing along because he thought he was kidding. Right. He's like, oh, yeah, there are Vulcans. Oh, he, and go. He's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're up there. I they're, thought to myself, they got him. <laughs> Dad was less miles that day where dreams come to die. <laughs> I will crush your dreams. End, start to- yeah, at the end, he just said, hey, oh, he it's not up. happening. It's yeah. not real. They've tricked you. <laughs> it's really just William Shatner, isn't it? But to say what we're saying, kids have a tendency of trusting what they see, and it was an innocent mistake. I mean, he he literally thought he did. that was going on, yep. and, and TV somehow was just capturing what happened. Right. He, but he you thought know, it was all real. To circle back on the reality of it, let's take our last break. They that when Kurt when uh, when Shatner went up, there were four people in the pod that went up. You know, a couple of months ago, one of those guys, forty nine years old, kind of a daredevil type guy. I just read a little bit about him. He died in a plane crash two or three days ago. A little small plane in New Jersey, and I just thought when I heard it, I thought, man, I mean, like. You know, he was just in space. This guy's done all these amazing things, but all it took was a plane that didn't function properly in New Jersey 
and it's over. And he was 49. And I just yeah. thought, that's really it in a nutshell, right? I mean, you, you're guaranteed nothing. I just wonder when the plane was going toward the earth and he knew. I mean, you hope he's a believer, you know? Yep. That's, yeah. that's what you hope. You hope. But but I, I just thought it was ironic that he had just been in space. You hope he had hope. He had been in space two months earlier, you know, which is crazy. Yeah. So well, what I, I was just going to say about this, I mean, I think the point of Matthew 18 was, I mean, for us as individuals to be really careful about how we influence younger people. Yeah. I mean, because as, yes, he's making this point that we're making, but he, he goes into all these things that causes people to sin and even kids. And he has that graphic illustration we talked about before. And then he gets to 10 where he talks about them, him knowing everything that's going on. And this is where we get, get the idea about the guardian angels, guardian angels which yep. I told you, I went on record. I believe kids have representatives kind of like we do have Jesus mediating for our lives, representing us. I mean, I don't know how else you can, I've read the commentaries and, and they, they just don't know. But he, but when he says, for I tell you that their angels, this is 1810, their T H E I R in heaven, always see the face of my father in heaven. So then I think this next verse, which goes into what we believe or call the, uh, you know, the prodigal son, that section in Luke 15, right. he told the story about the 99 and the one right. sheep. Well, he just tells a little bit of that here, and maybe Matthew borrowed this line, but I think within this context of talking about becoming children and having representatives in heaven and the spiritual world, he then goes makes every person feel important. Yeah. Which is when you look at the political culture of today and everybody saying, Oh, we're looking for equality and and justice for all and there's something beautiful about what Jesus did here that I think is more powerful than any political movement you can see. But he he says, What do you think if a man owns a hundred sheep? And one of them wanders away. Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. Which doesn't mean he doesn't care about the ninety-nine. He right. said, but he's thrilled that he found the one. You know, Jay's your point. I think your point is spot on. That shows how God feels about everybody he creates. Because if you say you had 10 kids, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do. I mean, one, you say, well, you got 10 kids, and, you know, something happened to one of them, you still got nine left. But none of us would that think would that would never happen. It would never happen. And all, I mean, the, all, the, all the little children in the wombs, in the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. That's right. That that includes in the womb. I mean, give me a break. That's everybody. No, no that's a child. It. Yeah. That's, that's a child in the womb. That's, that's how, why I said when it comes to causing people to sin, and look, you think, what is the number one, if you take Jesus out in the spiritual realm out, what is the number one change that, that changer, I get change agent of people's lives where they become better people? And when you think about that, it's when they have kids. You know, some of the worst people I know went to school with, and when they had their first kid, all of a sudden they're like, well, you know, I got to straighten up. Then they're looking for somebody like me or whatever right. to have, let's have a talk. Because now they feel like I need to get this right for this this kid. And I, I really think that's why God set this up the way he did. Because even if you're not a believer, there's something that happens there to most people, unless you're just, so high or so warped, you're gone. Well, you remember Mac Owen's story. Mac, when he did his testimony, you know, he was he was on like speed, you know, and Mac was just a he had a double life going, you know, and so he he was getting further away from wanting to play the game of going to church and all that. So he he started more and more just like doing what he wanted to do, and he was in the bed in there. He was acting like he was asleep because he didn't want to go to church. It was a Sunday morning. And Mary tried to get him up. He's like, oh, you know, I don't feel good. I've been working hard. And, you know, leave me alone. You know, all this. 
and Callie, who at the time, his daughter, youngest daughter, was four years old, she came in there and she put her fist on her hips. And she told her mom, and she said, if daddy's not going to church, then neither am I. And Max said her words for the first time above all others just penetrated him straight to the heart. And he thought, what am I doing? And that started his then road to recovery, as he calls it, yeah. and, and totally turned him around. But to your point, Jace, it was a four-year-old daughter that just said, well, you know, if he ain't going, I ain't going. But he said that, he said, and that, he said, so they all left and went to church. He said, I went and gathered up all my drug paraphernalia and I burned it all in the trash barrel. And then that night he came to White's Ferry Road and he came forward. And from that point on, the man has been, I mean, rock and roll for well, Jesus. Well, that's why God mirrors family. In, in that Luke 15, he got to that family setting on the third story, yeah. which is why I think here you see the same thing with the children and the father when you think about it in that context, which then leads to these these stories that say, well, if your brother sins against you, because we know, you just think about it, you're going to mess up in front of your children. Right. I mean, you're going to do it. Right. I think the best thing I learned being a parent is when I it hit me one day that I need to stop having all the answers, because I had a lot of them for them, and probably a lot of things, advice I gave them were good. But I realized one day I also got to acknowledge when I mess up, right? Because I have, and that was a big moment when yeah. I when I would tell each of my kids, "All right, look, you're going to have to grow up and be the best God wants you to be, in spite of some of the things I've done." Well, which we'll we'll talk. We're almost out of time, so we'll talk about more next time, Jace. But I made the point you just made that I think Jesus was the 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 logical reason he goes into this next section is that if you're going to be like a little kid, if you're going to try to be innocent and be like a little kid, then you're going to have some wrong in each other. And I use the illustration Sunday in my sermon of my grandkids. I mean, they start out, they're playing, everything's great. Well, within five minutes, somebody's coming in. Somebody took something. It's my turn on the iPad. She hit me. He yep. slapped me. He did this. And I'm just like, get out of here. Go, get back in there and get along. You know, I, you know, I, that's where I was going with this. <laughs> You know, little kids. And look, five minutes they, later, they're all back. On, they're all happy again, and we're they back. They have so many great qualities, but every once in a while, you know, you're you're there, and a golf ball comes whizzing by your head. <laughs> way too, way too many RPMs, a, and, and you're like, "What just happened here?" <laughs> remember that time I lobbed that danger has entered the room. <laughs> remember that time I lobbed that shotgun shell, Jay's across the room. Jay's is laying over there. That I thought, I wonder if I could just get him right in the crown of the head. I mean, he was halfway across the room. I there's a sh- a full shotgun mm-hmm. shell. That's heavy, and so and this was lead back in the day. I just lobbed that thing, and it got him right in the top of the head. And he's rolling around, you know. He, yeah. I mean, oh, I remember like I came. <laughs> Dad in, gave me the head pop. I came into my room when Jep was like four or five, so I I don't know how old that would make me. What fourteen or fifteen? He's four or five. Well, I come in and it's him and another four or five year old, but a girl. We're we're having a, a get together at the house, and they have no clothes on and are. You know, <laughs> emulating what happened. Playing you know, a little doctor. Fight. Yeah, and I said, hey, what are you doing? He said, we're playing doctor. I said, well, okay, I'm going to play daddy. I went over <laughs> and popped him. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I'm the daddy of doctor. <laughs> but I'm the I'm the dad in this. And that was my first spanking given to my brother. Because I thought, and they were innocent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, right? But it, to me, I was like, "Okay, no, nah, let's nip this." On yeah. The hood here. yeah, I didn't. I never heard that story. Man. <laughs> I'm glad you were there, son. <laughs> he was filling the role. That's good. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. We'll pick it up here next time. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.